Well, it's that time of the year to talk turkey. Now let me tell you what, if you've never tried turkey hunting, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's time to get out there. Kentucky, every county has turkeys. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna share with you experiences I've had over the years, things I've learned over the years from other people, or better yet, from mistakes that I've made turkey hunting. It's the best way you can learn is to go out and try things yourself. If you go out the first year and you don't get a turkey, don't be discouraged because every year you have behind you, you have built experiences. Now, the first thing you have to remember before you go into the turkey woods is their eyesight is phenomenal. If they see you move and recognize you as a human being, you're done. That's why camouflage comes in mighty handy. You have to be camouflaged from head to toe. Any kind of camouflage will do. Make sure it has some spring color in it because as you know, in the springtime, things turn green. You have to be invisible as possible. Face mask, gloves, completely head to toe camouflaged as best you can. Now for your toys, which you might have many in turkey hunting and for your comfort, you're gonna need a vest and most importantly, a padded seat because many times you'll find yourself in a situation where you have to hunker down, get quiet, and be still for long periods of time. The most important thing you can possibly do is find a gun that suits you. If you're smaller and it's got a lot of kick, you may want to go down to a 20 gauge. If you can handle a big brute of a three and a half inch shell in a 12 gauge, go to a 12 gauge. Uh, know the legalities, know what type of shells you can use, what kind of shot you can use. I prefer, I like a number five shot. It just shoots well in my gun. Now let me give you a suggestion. You wanna try different types of shots. Say you and your buddies all shoot 12 gauges. You wanna try different stuff. Go to the store. All of you buy a different box of shells. Find what works good in your gun. Now my gun, I shoot an older Benelli. I found a choke tube that just suits this gun and just suits me. It's called a jelly head. Usually a turkey choke is a full choke. That really gets your pattern in there and gets it good and tight and lets you concentrate on that head and neck area. When patterning a shotgun, I would recommend you start at 25 to 30 yards. That's your average distance of where you're gonna shoot. You can visualize how that pattern is gonna go out and hit that bird. Okay, you think about, if you aim at that head, you think about how your pattern is gonna go. Generally, if you aim at that head, a lot of time your pattern, and you may be excited, you may be breathing heavy, that pattern may go right over top of his head. Now, I have found with my particular outfit, the way that I like to shoot is I like to shoot right in the lower neck where the red area meets the feather area of a turkey. That generally works really well for me and gets my pattern exactly where I want to get it. And if you look at this pattern back here, there's probably 60 or 70 pellets in that vital area that's more than enough to put your turkey on the ground and have you a good turkey dinner. And I'm telling you what, get out there previous to the season. If you know you're gonna hunt somewhere, go scout, know your area, find out where these birds are roosting, know as much as you can about their habits without being invasive and scaring them off. Know as much as you can about their particular habits and you're gonna be a heck of a lot better off. For beginning turkey hunters, I suggest you pick a spot. Once you hear that bird, don't get up. Give him time to get to you. Now blinds are wonderful things for turkey hunting, especially for younger kids who have trouble being still. A lot of kids move around, and I kind of move around, I'm kind of hyper. Now again, try to understand the habits of turkeys, try to understand the noises they make, understand what you have to do to get them within range. Now the natural thing for a turkey to do, the gobbler will fly down, you see him strut. Now he's showing off how beautiful he is and everybody should be in love with him and the hens should come to him and they'll have coffee and they'll go on their way. Now, the deal with this turkey is he's used to that hen coming into him. So why on earth would that gobbler leave eight or 10 hens to come to your sound? Well, he's already got, he's already got a lot of little friends over there. So you're probably not gonna do much good. But what you can hope for is maybe, if you're far enough away from him, you may entice another male that's coming in from somewhere else who might try to sneak in and find him a lone hen. 
One of the most common sounds a hen makes is a yelp. It's just one of their noises they make. And this is a simple push-pull, which imitates the sound of a turkey yelping. And you can purr with that and everything, but that sound right there, that's enough. I like a mouth call, and it, for me, it's a good locator call. You can really get a lot of volume on it. Many different mouth calls make many different tones, and you don't need much more than that to kill a turkey sometimes. My favorite call in the world that I have probably killed more turkeys with is a slate or a glass. They make aluminum calls, all kinds of stuff. Just kind of do it in a circular motion as you go around. Just kind of put it, apply even pressure. And just play with it a while, it'll take a while. That's a turkey yelp. And another sound that I really, really like to use, and this is just simply dragging and let it kind of bump its way along, is a purr. Too many times you see a television show where somebody's using a call and they're just hammering it and the bird's hammering back and they're hammering back and they're hammering back and a lot of times it doesn't happen like that. A lot of times if you do that, you're gonna discourage that bird and he's done and he's gone. Sometimes if you will be quiet and just every now and then give a little purr, which is a contented sound of a bird that's not frightened, it's in its area, it's feeding, it's just doing what it does. That will entice that tom to come on in. Some of the worst callers that I know in the world kill a lot more birds because they have patience and they have the wood skills to be out there and be hidden, be quiet, and understand what that bird's doing. For those folks who are brand new to the woods and wonder what a turkey decoy is, it is basically a model. You can have Jake decoys, you can have hen decoys, you can have tom decoys. Typically, you want to make the appearance that there's actually a hen or a Jake or a group of birds out there to entice other birds in. They are mating, so you want to use these to bring other birds in. Judging yardage can be an issue. Now, if you don't have a blind around you, um, and you're trying to get a rangefinder up to judge that turkey, that can be tough. If you're using a decoy, however, you can set this decoy and you know it's at 20 or 25 yards, you kind of know where the birds are roosting, you know that they're coming into this particular area. That can give you a real good idea of yardage. You know what your shotgun can do and you can judge from that point on. Safety. Very simple, don't shoot at movement. Make sure, absolutely sure you're shooting at a turkey. Don't shoot at colors, red, white, or blue. And on your way out of the woods, if you're packing that bird over your shoulder, or even part of it's hanging out of your vest, bring an orange hat with you. Summing up, disappear. Be as invisible as you can in the turkey woods. Pattern your shotgun, know exactly what your gun's doing. Scout vigorously, know what the birds are doing. Don't overcall. Once you establish contact with that bird, let him come to you. And you're working against nature. Remember, typically, the hens go to him. Be patient, be safe, and have a whole lot of fun. And remember, don't get discouraged. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Till next week, I'm Tim Farmer. Hope to see you in the woods or on the water.